Hi, for this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to construct a 90% confidence interval using the TI Inspire graphing calculator. Um, so the situation we have here is in a survey of 1,500 females, ages 18 to 64, 996 say that they have gone to the dentist in the past year. And so for this one, what we have to first figure out is what type of confidence interval we want to generate. And because of the fact that we are given a part of a sample, that is our p hat. And so that needs to um, trigger that you're going to use the one proportion z interval. Okay, so for this one, um, the condition that must be met in this one in order for the central limit theorem to kick in is that n times p hat, which is also known as the number of successes, has to be greater than or equal to 5, and n times q hat, which is our number of failures, also has to be greater than or equal to 5. So if we look at this right here, 996 would be our n times p hat. That would be this part right here. So we can say that 996 successes is definitely greater than or equal to 5. And our number of failures is found by taking our total minus the 996. And so if we do that, we end up with 504 failures. So since both our successes and our failures out of this sample are greater than or equal to 5, the central limit theorem kicks in. And so we can use the normal distribution to model this situation. So after you've checked the conditions to make sure that it does work, and depending upon your textbook, there are some additional um, conditions that must be met in order to use this. So just check your textbook for any references as, um, with additional conditions that might be in your related text. Um, so with this, we are constructing a 90% confidence interval. So that's our level of confidence that we're going to use. The formula for the one proportion z interval, there are two that I know um, based on the textbook that I use. So one textbook that I teach from uses p hat minus e, and the population proportion is in between p hat minus e and p hat plus e, where e is equal to zc, which is the critical value, times p hat q hat divided by n. Or another textbook that I have taught from uses the formula p hat plus or minus z star, which is just another way of notating zc, which is still, again, the z score that corresponds to the level of confidence that we're using, times p hat q hat divided by n. Okay, so we're going to use these formulas and I'm going to show you how to use the Inspire to generate the critical value. So this right here is the critical value. This is the z-score that corresponds to that level of confidence. Okay, and what we're going to do to find this in our Inspire is we're going to use inverse norm. And since 90% is in the middle, we're going to do one half of one minus our level of confidence as a decimal comma zero comma one, those are the values that we're gonna put in, where zero is the mean and one is the standard deviation since we're dealing with a z-score. Remember that in a z-score, it's a standard normal where it's centered at zero with a standard deviation of one. So let me grab my calculator and I'm just gonna add a calculator screen. And I'm gonna to go to menu and statistics. And for right now, and I don't want to go to the confidence intervals just yet. I want to do distributions first because I'm going to show you how to find the critical value. So we're going to go to inverse norm. The area is going to be 1 divided by 2 or 1 half 0.5. You could also plug in 1 minus 0.9. And it's going to give me, because this is talking about the lower z-score, the um, one and the negative side, this is going to give me the negative critical value. The positive critical value is just the opposite sign, so you can write down either one of them. Most of the time we round to two decimal places, but because this is a special one that's used a lot and it's in the center, we're going to go ahead and round this one to three. So the 90% is always going to use 1.645 as the critical value. Like I said, most of the time we round to two decimal places, but this is an exception because it's directly in the middle. Sometimes we'll go to three places as an exception. So now to show the work, 
I'm actually going to run it in my calculator in order to get the p hat. I could find p hat. Remember, p hat is the number of successes that we have, 996, um, divided by the number in our survey, the 1500. So I could put it as p hat is 996 over 1500, or I can run this in my calculator. So what I'm going to do is run the entire confidence interval in my calculator. So I'm going to hit menu. And again, go to statistics. This time I'm going to go to my confidence intervals. And I'm going to generate the Z interval. And it's, sorry, let me go back. I did what is often done. I modeled what not to do. I'm going to go to menu, statistics, and confidence intervals. And I'm going to choose the one proportion Z interval, which is different than the Z interval. The Z interval is for the mean. The one proportion Z interval is for proportions. So it's going to ask for the number of successes. So the number of successes in this case is 996. This must be a whole number. So if they don't give you the number of successes, I do have a video that shows you how to um, convert a percentage to an x value. So you can watch that one. Um, n is going to be our number in our sample, the 1500. And our confidence level is going to be 0.9. And then when I click OK, notice that it gives me my lower limit, the 0.64394, and my upper is 0.68406. It also gives me the p hat. It gives me the margin of error in this calculator. The margin of error is this E that I was talking about right here. So it gives you the result of this if you need to show work with that. Um, most of the time, it's acceptable just to show, to plug in what we had. So P hat was 0.664 in the calculator, plus or minus, and I'm gonna use this formula. Remember our ZC or our Z star is the 1.645. P hat is 0.664. Remember that Q hat, to find Q hat, it's 1 minus P hat. So if I do 1 minus 0.664, I get 0.336. Okay, and then we would just divide it by our sample size of 1500. So this would be considered showing work. Um, you're showing what you plugged in. You know your P hat, you know your Q hat, you know your critical value. And then we would just put our answer. So in this case, our answer is going to be um, the lower. So if you go back to the calculator, the lower and the upper. So I would put 0 0.64394 to 0.68406. And then you always want to interpret your confidence interval in context of the original problem. So you always start with the level of confidence. So we would say with 90% confidence, the proportion, because we're talking about a population proportion, and we're not going to reference the sample in here. Never reference the sample. It's always the population. So we're going to say the proportion of, and if we read the problem again, remember that we're talking about females ages 18 to 64 who have visited the dentist in the past year. Okay, so with 90% confidence, the proportion of females age 18 to 64 who say they have visited the dentist in the past year is between 64.39% and 68.41%. Okay, another way that sometimes they'll um, report it as the point estimate, which is our p hat, um, plus or minus our margin of error, which was given to us in the problem. So we could also say that it's um, the proportion who have visited is 66.4% with a margin of error of plus or minus 2%. Um, that kind of just gives you an in-between value that you can use. So remember when interpreting, it is very important that you put the level of confidence and you include the context of the problem in a way that anybody reading it would understand. As always, thanks for watching. If there are additional topics you need me to cover, please let me know. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know.